Oh, man, there is nothing quite like a celebratory afternoon cup of tea. Right, Nikki? Here, buddy. Aw, you find any mice in the garage today? Aw, you don't say. Oh, that's the stuff. So anyway, today I'm gonna to show you guys how I went from the bone stock wide wheel horse rim with the tiny little ball bearing that has a habit of walking out of the rim because there's really nothing retaining the bearing in other than just some friction. And we're going to go to another copy of a Creepy Crawler mod. This is a kind of a blend between a 520H axle, which does have some tapered roller bearings, and a trailer hub that's uh, totally ripped off from Creepy Crawler, but he is the man when it comes to this stuff. And I'm gonna show you guys how I executed it. Enjoy. So the factory wheel horse spindle has some issues. Uh, the older ones are thinner in here, and if you're off-roading or doing really heavy-duty stuff, it will bend like this one and really throw your alignment off. I've already had to re-weld this one. Uh, these are kind of common breaking point. I am fortunate to have one of the ones that is drilled and tapped in the end for a bolt, which is a really nice way to hold the wheel on. But a lot of these just come with the snap ring groove or the cotter pin, which is a pain in the butt to do any tire maintenance. Um, the snap ring has failed on me. It's failed on other people. The cotter pin is pretty strong because it's big enough, but... Um, since I have destroyed these in the LCQ event at Creepy Crawler's house, it is time for an upgrade. So while this can go in the dumpster, enter new front spindle and hub assembly. Ah, that is much stronger there. I've drilled and tapped the hub for a quarter 28 so I could put in a nice 45 degree grease fitting so I could pump this hub full of grease and keep it pump, pump full of grease. The spindle, this is just a cheap eBay uh, one inch trailer spindle with, with hubs. Um, three and a half inch wide rims that have been powder coated black because that's my wheel color. Uh, put my front tires back on them, got them full of like, about two and a half gallons of RV antifreeze. So this is a new old stock wheel horse um, steering spindle. It's thicker than uh, the one that was used in 1969. Still subject to a lot of stress and off-road, so that's why I've welded this piece of 3 8 round stock on here to make actually triangulate that and make that very strong. Um, so the spindle's been cut off quite a bit. It's been bored just with a three-quarter drill in the center, notched quite a bit with a die grinder for it to get into the bend on this spindle. There was only about a, I'd say about an inch left of material on the spindle here. Um, I know it's kind of a shame to cut off brand new parts, but I really wanted to make something really beautiful and, and strong um, and also brand new as well. I didn't want any wear on a shaft here of a used one. I, I wanted brand new material to play with. And these new ones were thicker here and I, I really thought that was a good selling point. So a lot of TIG welding passes later um, to fill that up um, and to, I also add another small piece of 3 8 round bar here to really make this connection strong between the steering arm and uh, the spindle shaft itself. So what's really nice now is that I get tapered roller bearings that are way better than the chintzy ball bearings. I can pump them full of grease. They can take way more load and heavy duty use. So now I actually have hubs, so I can take my tire off with four lug nuts to do any maintenance. Um, and the other big advantage here is, um, you know, on a, on, a mud, on a mud tractor, you know, the center of gravity is a little too far back. So having these heavy duty hubs up front kind of adds some weight up front to help keep the front end down and to help put um, just weight right over the center line of this tire to uh, really help it steer better. I haven't done anything too fancy for tie rods yet, but um, 
I don't know what's with these eBay replacements, but they were just a little too short. Um, so I've cut off the form down here, welded on a bolt to get the extra length. Um, and now they're fully rebuildable and I have a few um, extra rod ends I can keep in the toolbox. So I am pretty happy with all this mod came out. I really hope these steering arms don't bend uh, anymore over, under some heavy use. Pretty satisfying sight to see all the grease come through the rollers on that bearing. And I'll be able to keep up with maintenance on this pretty easily. Here's both new spindles and hubs installed. And the tire is still pretty close to the kingpin. It's not like I've stretched out the stance at all. My overall width is still only about 34 inches, which is pretty good. All right, if you guys have stuck around this long, and for some reason you like videos of grown men modifying garden tractors into four-wheelers, I'm gonna treat you guys with the epic shot of me starting this up and driving out of the garage. Enjoy the exhaust notes of a $100 eBay muffler strapped onto a homemade header.